So we're going to start, um, allow me to start to uh, introduce um, our, our speakers and uh, participants of today's uh, webinar. We're going to start with Mr. Muhannad Al-Bakri, uh, who is the um, Managing uh, Director at the Royal Film Commission of Jordan. Uh, uh, Mohanad has um, has a, a history with uh, with the Film Commission, uh, being a, a returning uh, member um, of the Film Commission, um, and then we're gonna move um, with Mr. Youssef Hamid Din, who is the general partner of Venture X and um, Wadi Araba Agritech. Uh, fund manager and he will be uh, speaking um, to us about uh, IBDA, the Culture and Creative Works Accelerator and then um, allow me I'll be introducing our participants as we go uh, with their success uh, stories. Um, so let's start uh, with you uh, Mr. Muhannad. Yeah, um, thank you so much uh, for uh, for the introduction. I'm I'm uh, glad that I'm part of this uh, webinar, uh, and glad with the collaboration and the partnership with uh, with Venture X uh, coming up with this with such important initiative uh, um, that the film industry is in need of. I'll be sharing uh, my screen for a simple presentation. Um, the presentation is about uh, the. Um, um film commission and why we're doing this with the with the um venture x as as a as a, a partnership uh, of course uh, for those who doesn't know what what we do at the film commission um the film commission was established um, around 2003 uh, as an umbrella for the film uh, industry or audiovisual industry and under it there is other other uh, several uh, uh, creative uh, sectors uh, our focus and, and uh, programs that we provide is different than any other film commission around, around the world. It's not only the uh, classical um, um, role of promoting uh, the locations of that country, but uh, in Jordan, we went beyond this because um, uh, they're, they're, uh, when we established the film commission, there was a big need for it, and now it's growing, and uh, with time, uh, still, we're going to be uh, adapting according to the to the um, uh, coming um, uh, changes, and of course, it's the structure. So, through the film commission, we we work on 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 training programs, uh, uh, local and international. Our regional training program uh, pre presents um, uh, programs that can benefit not only the Jordanian but also the people around the Arab uh, world. Uh, always we partner with uh, institutions uh, that uh, has uh, the experience but also with ex uh, expertise from around the world. For example, if I can mention some of the regional training uh, programs uh, through the training department, um, it's Rawi Screenwriting Lab, uh, which is a, a screenwriting lab that started with the uh, Sundance Institute to uh, work with uh, Arab um, uh, writers. Many projects came out of this uh, this uh, lab. Uh, many success stories, and mainly it is uh, structured in a way that will help the filmmakers uh, hear their voices better. Um, then we do have uh, actually the last year was the last round of the Med Film Factory, uh, and this is uh, a completion of the uh, cycle of filmmaking uh, where. The screenwriting lab is focusing on the creative writing of uh, of the stories and the scripts, but the Med Film Factory goes beyond this. Goes into uh, working with those filmmakers, whether producers, directors, scriptwriters, and crew, to be able to get um, uh, the best uh, of their projects to um, apply for funds, uh, to practice, and to. Um, uh, uh, understand their vid visual uh, visual uh, language. Uh, the film prize is also uh, in a partnership with uh, with um, uh, Robert Bosch Foundation in Germany, 
uh, where it's a co-production market focusing on animation, um, uh, 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 documentary, and and narrative narrative films. Uh, this this round this year is, is going to be the final round of this uh, um, uh, partnership, but we're uh, going to complete. Um, uh, uh, to similar programs with uh, with other other countries, uh, Project Market uh, Project Market Amman is the name of the uh, partnership, and then we have the film anthology, which is in a partner partnership with um, with the UNESCO. Uh, many other programs that we provide uh, through the capacity building department. Capacity building department was the first department that was established as a operating uh, uh, hands on. Uh, uh, training and capacity building for for filmmakers. Uh, the uh, the um, department started with beginner level of uh, uh, across the f film industry um, um, uh, uh, sectors, w whether it's uh, the digital general filmmaking or the specific technical or uh, creative uh, training workshops. Uh, just um, I have few numbers uh, of of the workshops that were. Uh, that were implemented in the past uh, four years, uh, we, we implemented 224 um, uh, training workshops and uh, through our film centers, because we have film centers around, uh, around Jordan, not only focused in Amman, uh, 133, also a number of participants uh, uh, exceeded the, uh, the 2,600 in Amman and uh, uh, 2,100 in, in, the, in, in the film centers. Um, uh, the communication department is a department that is um, focusing on the cultural uh, uh, compo component where we screen uh, films continuously. Now with Corona, we're, we're, we didn't stop uh, doing that. Um, we're doing it online where uh, uh, we introduce independent films and films from around the world and sometimes uh, attached to it, the filmmakers to inspire and to talk about their, their experience. Um, recently, uh, the film fund, the Jordan Film Fund, uh, was established, and this is uh, purely to focus on the Jordanian uh, uh, production, the jo Jordanian films and TV series and animation, on also um, um, uh, divided on on different different levels. It can be the development, the the production, post production, and and uh, beyond that, the support of the the filmmakers. Uh, if I want to um, look at the establishment of this partnership between us and Venture X, I met Yusuf, uh, uh, Mr. Yusuf Hamid uh, at the Ministry of Culture when they were launching their Venture X uh, 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 creative and cultural ex um, uh, uh, program. And now I, I uh, the, the, uh, maybe I was, and he can he can correct this. I was the first uh, uh, person to ask. Are you including film film industry? And he was like, "Yeah, that's why we invited the, the film commission because we believe that the potential in the film uh, sector is huge, and most of of what um, what uh, um, we continued on this uh, discussion uh, led us to this partnership." Um, with the growth of of the uh, film industry in Jordan and the way that we are. Uh, um, uh, growing as a, as a country, not only producing but also um, uh, inviting and hosting lots of international productions, and specifically in the past five years, uh, Sharif also can talk about this as a, as a producer, uh, one of the speakers, one of the main speakers in in, the, in this uh, webinar, uh, can can uh, um, can tell you how much the um, sector is growing still. We do believe that the full circle isn't yet completed uh, uh, to call ourselves uh, established industry, specifically in some areas. You can, you can, the highlights of Jordan, uh, not only the locations, the diverse locations and the, the uh, uh, distances between those locations, which reflects uh, financially uh, uh, on, on the uh, budgets of the uh, productions, but also the skilled crews that we have, uh, the, uh, the services that we that we provide. Uh, uh, on top of it is the incentive programs that we provide as a film commission to to the uh, uh, international production. And now recently we announced also Arab productions and Jordanian productions to benefit from the incentive uh, programs. Um, uh, 
the, the, as as I mentioned, the growth is uh, is becoming much bigger, and the, the demand is becoming uh, much more needed into growing it uh, into the sector into the the uh, the uh, 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 film industry. Um, I have I have uh, a number of of thirty five sectors ac across uh, uh, the film industry that can benefit from it. But worldwide, you can look online and you'll find that it covers one hundred and thirty, one hundred and forty sectors, uh, and it depends always on the infrastructure that is uh, in each country. Um, growing with this with this um, um, industry. It doesn't mean that we we always have to change and adapt according to what's happening, especially the game change with the uh, streaming and the the online content uh, is so so important. Um, um, and each sector can impact not only on the sectors themselves but the overall uh, economy of of the country. And there's uh, some indirect impacts such as as the uh, tourism, uh, for example, Aladdin or The Martian or uh, Star Wars or, or uh, Messiah or any other, other uh, production that happened in the country uh, um, highlighted the locations of Jordan. And so, so many people were, were uh, 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 interested to come and visit the country because of those films, which we considered as an indirect, uh, indirect uh, uh, impact. I just want to leave everybody, don't want to speak uh, very much because I'm sure that most uh, know those uh, inform information and uh, the needs of such an initiative. I just want to leave you with uh, some numbers. Uh, uh, expenditure uh, reach uh, for during the five uh, past years uh, in spending in Jordanian dinars, 264 million dinars and the employment of 106 thousand Jordanian citizens. Uh, the, that, the projection that I'm going to mention now was supposed to happen in, um, in, in 20 to, to, the, to, to 2020 to 2021, but with, uh, with the COVID-19, uh, the game changed, but we had a proje projection of $2 million, uh, $200 million uh, of projects uh, uh, coming, coming to the country and 12,000 um, uh, job opportunities for the Jordanian only during 2020, 2020, 2021. Um, this, this, uh, this didn't stop us as a country to uh, be one of the very few countries during the pandemic to produce films. We've had we and and and, and invite films to come and film in Jordan. We've had a project from India, from uh, Korea. Uh, uh, Netflix, Netflix projects, and of course the local local industry, where we hope that my my dream, my goal, my aim, and the vision of the Film Commission is to have the sustainability of the local production, local uh, um, uh, uh, emphasize on the, um, the, the 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 Jordanian films, Jordanian stories to come uh, around the world, but also to become as a, an economic uh, source um, uh, to the sector, but also to the country. That's it for me. I spoke too much. I'll leave you here. Diala, please. No, no problem. Thank you very much, Mohanad. If anything, that was very important. Also, um, figures are important also to put uh, some things into perspective. Um, the film industry in Jordan is a growing industry um, and it is growing uh, really fast, which brings us to the necessity of growing our infrastructure um, from, from many, many aspects. And um, we have um, VentureX who, is, uh, who launched um, the Culture and Creative Works Accelerator IBDA for this purpose, uh, so I'm gonna ask um, our speaker, Mr. Youssef Hamid Adin, um, who is the uh, managing partner at VentureX, to talk to us and brief us about um, IBDA. Uh, Mr. Youssef. Thank you, uh, Mohanad Yani, for the um, um, for the overview and for the introduction and for a great partnership so far. 
um, and um, it's been it's been really re rewarding to see us move forward with these steps. I mean, you know, we began all of this in a crisis, and I think that um, the, 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 there's a lot of excitement that a lot of good will come out of this for all those that will be involved in this project. Um, Venture X is really an answer to um, um, uh, work that was done across 2017 and 2018 and 2019, where um, um, it, it was basically how can we try to see and, 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 and build uh, or become a catalyst for the creation of, um, of, of an innovative economy. And the, um, uh, the key uh, in, is, is really innovation and, and, and the key is, is the multitude of companies and startups and, um, and small medium enterprises that can all collaborate together to really move um, 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 uh, you know, the needle in the direction of more diverse contributions that can be um, uh, enriching for the whole scene um, across, uh, you know, the creation of new businesses and across, um, um, uh, and, and also to empower new ideas and new concepts. And um, it's, it, it also is rooted in a historical experience um, when it comes to the creation and the emphasis that innovation has, and, the, and specifically the cultural and creative sector. A sector that is diverse, it's rich, it's, it has so many people uh, working in it, uh, people that, that, that are seeking opportunities, they want to thrive, they want to grow, they want to go beyond um, Jordan, they want to be more regional. And the, the, um, um, you know, the, the, the trend was that this sector in general um, uh, was, was underserved in many ways. I mean, there's there are great institutions, but I think that what we wanted to do at IBDA is to try to bring um, these the the collective effort um, around you know moving moving um, 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 uh, as one entity in 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 a common direction, and if that is an accelerator, right? But but I think it's very important for us to highlight that there are terms that are very important for us to consider as we look at you, the audience. And we want to engage with you, and we want you to join this program. We want you to join this 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 effort, right? So I know I, I want the, the the key takeaways that I'd like you to consider are a um, um, you know entrepreneurship and and in, in, in its much broader base um, um, accelerator is what we are basically what we're talking about and how we want to accelerate and what acceleration means. I guess probably the best uh, um, uh, note that I'd like to highlight here is that. We want to reach a quick answer to the question of does this work or it doesn't, and therefore maybe I should do something else in life. It doesn't mean that um, I should walk away, but do something else or change it or modify it. And it, it really um, seeks innovative concepts. And I hope that some of the case studies that we will listen to uh, will be inspiring for all of us to understand how diverse this sector is. And it might not be the same thing that we consider, and it's really interesting to to hear the the uh, uh, the, the people that will follow me. Um, value proposition is very important for us to work together on. Minimum viable product, you know, what what's the minimum base that can take you from from where you are to something that you can put into the market that can be attractive enough for people to come and invest in. Um, pitch deck, right? I mean, you know, what what you're seeing right now, I am pitching you the idea of you coming on board and, and, and joining this program. So this is my pitch deck, right? And, and, and angel investors, which is very fitting with the, um, um, you know, with theater, music, dance, film, and, and all of these things that we are um, um, excited about, um, because that's where a lot of these, uh, a lot of, I mean, that's where maybe the concept even came from. Um, you know, people really being philanthropists and going out of their way and helping creative minds um, achieve their potential. And of course, VC and, and the model of VC, you know the difference between venture capitalists and the difference between equity investments and 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 portfolio and you know how do you manage a portfolio as a VC? How do you realize your exit? How do you realize your your ROI? And last but not least, is you always have to think about your business model. How are you going to make money out of this exercise and and why are you doing it? And of course, is it is it a business model that can grow exponentially or is it something that you can basically more or less um, um, work with, but it becomes a lifestyle business? And it's key that, that, that everybody around the table also just looks in the, you know, looks in the mirror and asks themselves and, and probably 
you know, many of you have, have, have made that leap of faith and have decided that they want to go, go ahead and, and go forward because you are risk takers and, you, and you're saying, you know what, I want to do what, what, what my heart um, uh, is, 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 is interested in and, and I want to dedicate my life towards that. And that's where you want to start to move away from, from just having the passion to also getting introduced to what it means to manage the process. Um, you know, hire, fire. How do you basically make tough decisions? How do you develop an organization and design such an organization? Um, how do you work with capital and people who want to give you money? But um, what are the conditions? What are the strings attached to that capital that you want to take on board? Um, what markets should you be focusing on? Are you going to be focusing on the region? Are you going to be focusing on, you know, access? Or, and, and we've seen today how the world is really becoming one um, uh, small melting pot where everybody wants to talk in every type of language. We're watching content that's, it's, that, that's in multiple languages. It could be Polish, it could be Russian, it could be Korean, it could be Spanish from Latin America or even from continental Europe. But last but not least in this specific area is you have to reflect leadership, right? And you have to reflect the ability to see that, that, that uh, uh, the vision of, of what you want to achieve. And then you have to have the ability to cascade it downward. And, and I think, at the end, probably, I mean, um, is there a science to why you want to be an entrepreneur? One, one key point is that you want to make a difference for yourself. And I think that, and you have a passion for what you want to do, and you can't realize that passion by staying in, in by, by, you know, graduating from school and going to a job. You're still on campus, probably, in some cases. You could have graduated and you're working in a job that you don't like a lot, but you feel that, you know, you, there's, there's a lot of options for you out there. But I would probably summarize it into two main points is one, you want to generate wealth for yourself, right? You want to make a difference for yourself. And the second thing is you want to have a, multi a, a multiple when it comes to the income that you can generate. And it should be capable of not only competing, but outperforming your current career options that you might have considered in the past. So then I guess it's, you know, this brings me to, again, who we are. I'd really try to emphasize that. We want to work with people with ideas and try to see how we can take those ideas um, and make them um, um, realize their best potential to improve the quality of life of the people that, that they will touch. And we do that by having two separate arms. Um, on one side, we are a fund manager. So by, by, I mean by that is that we have, um, we, we're, we're with a general partner, we work with investment managers, or we are the, the IM in some cases, and we work on launching theme-based funds. Um, we have a, an $85 million fund that we've announced and launched in the agri-tech uh, space with uh, a region called Wadi Araba here in Jordan. We talk about agri-tech seed stage and we also talk about, about, about hardware. And, and, and you know something in the making that Mohanad and I have talked about a, a lot about is how can we create something down the road um, um, at a later stage, depending on the pipeline and depending on the assessment of what we do together here in the accelerator is to see the potential of doing something that can serve the interest of people who want to apply their ideas in a Jordanian context. The second part of what we do is really about, about um, a building accelerators, right? Whether it's at an industry specific area or at, at, at a regional specific area. So um, um, we have an umbrella regional strategy called Accelerate Jordan. We work on innovation in Yemen. We work on innovation in a specific region, as I said, similar and in line with the fund that we created for that region called the, the, the Wadi Arab Innovation Valley. And we've created these theme-based accelerators that IBDA is one of them. And, and frankly, I have a very um, 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 personal interest and, 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 and a passion for the creative side to see it through uh, for, for, for a lot of economic reasons. I mean, A, above, you know, it, 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 the average income in this sector is by far better than any sector that we might have in Jordan. We just need to grow it further. Um, the stickiness of the sector itself. I mean, if you do something in the sector, you really tend to be capable of defending it because you're, you know, there, there's a unique value proposition that's difficult to compete with and, and difficult to take away from you. And I think there's a lot of talented minds across, across Jordan that can actually contribute towards that end in mind. Yes. Um, um, can, yes, Mr. Youssef, um, um, I was uh, going just to um, ask uh, us uh, ask you to kindly uh, talk to us about who is Ibda uh, inviting. Well, I mean, Ibda 
is, is really um, um, asking you, the people around this table and listening to us, to consider um, a, you could be doing one of two things. You could be either um, um, a current running business and you want to expand it and you want to grow it and you want to basically take it forward to a, 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 a second level. You could be an idea that you've been thinking about and you want to see whether or not this idea has potential to grow and develop further. Um, um, you could be at a stage where you think that your business is doing well, you, you're, uh, but, but, but you're seeking capital and you want to see how can you make your business model investable. And, 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 and in doing so, we want to work together to realize that um, uh, going forward. The, um, um, so one, it's, it's, it, it, you could be, as I said, uh, and how we distinguish it is between either ideation or you know, a current business, a current startup, if you want to call it, or a current SME or, or a small medium enterprise that you're working on and you've been working on for maybe five, seven years already. But it's been more of a lifestyle um, um, uh, approach. It's helped you grow, but you really want to take it to the second level and you think that you can do that. So the, the, the application process is, is for you to share what do you do today and try to answer that by saying, where do I want to take it forward, right? And once you join us, we want then to see how can we surround you with people who are around the theme in the film sector and people who are around business. And the combination of business and theme should give you the, the, the outcome of accelerated growth for you to go ahead and deliver on what you want to achieve, right? Um, we will look at your applications. We will then put you into, into a program that's probably going to be three months, but extend itself to six if we include the whole acceleration structure. It's, it's anchored in advisory, mentorship, and, and how we work together to seek funding for you and look for the right level of administrative support that we want to share. And then we stay with you. You become a portfolio company, and we want to keep you on board for the next X number of years. But for the, for, for the first 12 months right after you uh, you know, um, um, uh, graduate from the accelerator is we want to work a lot on, uh, you know, what type of networking that you need to continue on. How do we extend your your access to capital? And we keep we keep that that dialogue and that discussion going between us, right? Um, I won't talk about what the value proposition is quickly, but I'll, I'll just give you the highlights, right? At the end, what do you want to do in a, in in, in IBDA? You want to validate that your idea has the opportunity to deliver exponential growth, really. That's, that's really the core of what you want to spend time doing. And then um, um, the, the journey, you know, for whether it's the coaching, whether it's the experience, the testing of the product, the networking, connecting you globally to different players, the mentorship, it's really trying to bring you to the last circle. How can you access investments and capital that can um, um, a, where, where we work with you as your partner in, 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 in creating the right valuation for your, for your business and attracting the right funds that you need um, um, to qualify for. Um, you all have access to the website. You just go to the website, you, you, you submit a, a, an, an initial application form and it tells, you know, and then it takes you through a cycle where we'll call you back and forth until we get to a, a, a point where we sign something together which is what we call a term sheet between us and you around what we want to achieve. What's, you, what's different about IBDA, just to be very clear, is that we don't give you upfront capital. What we do believe in is that we want to um, um, carve out a way forward that identifies the different um, 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 uh, um, you know, values that you want to generate and create. We, we work together on stretching that to make it really something that investors can look at and, and, and believe in. And then we work with you to raise the capital accordingly. And that's really where it sums up the, 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 um, 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 the commercial structure of IBDA. IBDA is a commercial entity. And, and to get the right level of, as they say, to have skin in the, in, in the game and to be committed to the portfolio companies that we will potentially work with together, we, we, um, um, we have an equity structure that allows us at the signing of the term sheet to take up around 7% equity. And then if we do raise capital, we basically take 7% success fees. Um, the outcome of this process is really a driving force to be very selective. You have to be um, um, selective about, Sorry, you know, are, we, are we the best uh, a partner for you? And we have to make sure that 
we are keen to identify the projects that we believe we can work with and, 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 and we have the right to win in, as they say. This could not have happened without partnerships, right? And these partnerships all fall into place in some form or fashion. They all are related to each other. They complement each other. Um, um, I think that the, the, uh, uh, the, these partnerships are things that you will have access to, but of course, more or less, the, each track is independent of the other. What we're going to listen to is to a couple of ideas that really talk about um, um, what they do, right? And I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'll, I'll actually stop right here and, and allow you to get uh, an introduction by each one of the, the, uh, the upcoming uh, uh, companies that will talk to us about what they did, what's their journey, and, and for you to look at that as an example of how you might want to pursue doing something and, and, and that filmmaking might not be always just making film. It might not be always just making script or writing script. It could be so many other exciting things that could come out of it. And I'll leave the floor to the, uh, to the uh, um, um, kind guests that will follow to take us through their inspiring journeys and, and for us to learn from. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yusuf. I, um, before moving on to our uh, first um, uh, guest uh, speaker, I'm just going to remind all our um, webinar participants that they can send us their questions um, on the chat and we will try to get to all of uh, their questions and attend to them um, at the end of our session. So I'm gonna move to our um, first guest, which uh, who is uh, Mr. Oliver Fegan from Usher U. Hello, Oliver, uh, you're speaking to us all the way uh, from uh, Dublin. From a cold and wet Dublin. For the cold and wet Dublin. Um, can you please, um, so we know uh, Usher U, uh, you started the company with a with two of your friends um uh, can you talk us uh, through how um you started your business and share your success story please okay th thank you very much and then thank you um to the royal film commission and you Seth, for being here it's it was actually really in inspiring to see this accelerator starting and five years ago i would have loved to have seen this because it, it's kind of perfect for for what we do um I suppose how, how my own uh, journey started is my, my brother is a filmmaker and I was developing technology businesses in, in other spaces. And by chance, someone basically sent me an application from the British Film Institute to develop an application for the movie industry. And on a whim, I applied for it and we got 25,000 pounds funding and I met up with two friends of mine who one worked for Google and the other is like a very technical person who's, who, who's our head of technology and explained what I was trying to do. And on the same day, the two of them said, let's do it. So we, it was fortuitous because I think the most important thing I learned is, you know, businesses are built by great people. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say my, my two business partners are a lot more intelligent than I am. And we've built a team now that's around 25 people who who are even more intelligent than all of us and you know smart young minds and um, just to, to explain what we do and I, I might just share my presentation which might give it a bit more and um, please go ahead a bit of context as, as i go but um, if anyone does have any questions i'm, I'm happy to um to uh you know take questions as, as i go along and um, one second so I, I suppose in, in, a, in a big picture, and this is this goes back to uh, Youssef's point around business model and you know pivoting and things like product market fit. We, we started to develop products, a consumer product. And very quickly we learned that the value of what we were doing was to create a, a, biz, a, B2, a B2B as opposed to a B2C solution. And so we started off, I suppose, selling cinema tickets directly to consumers for distressed inventory. And what that kind of means is, you know, a movie that's not performing particularly well at the last minute, a cinema could try and um, sell, sell tickets for. Um, and I suppose people can buy tickets at that sort of last, you know, at that last minute. What we, what we realized, and we were very lucky that Universal came to us and said, we would love to sell tickets uh, directly to consumers. And through that and a couple of other pivots, we kind of built a product market fit. And a product market fit basically means where 
we went from trying very hard to sign customers to it becoming a little bit easier and a little bit easier and and a bit easier after that. But you know, it's 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 a rocky road, I suppose, the startup industry, which I'm sure uh, Youssef Youssef will attest to from his from his other accelerators. But we work with, I suppose, a range of partners um, who will be, you know, the, some of the main studios like Universal, Sony, Paramount, um, to national film bodies like the Royal Film Commission, um, such as German Films, Screen Ireland, the BFI, um, Austrian Film Commission. And we also work with producers. And in a nutshell, if I was to explain what we, where we sort of came from, where this pivot was, is when we started working with Universal, we were building a standalone website. And, and what that means in very simple terms is we create a website called, you know, like venom.com um, where they send all their marketing traffic through. So ads on Facebook, on the you know, billboards, it all has the domain name to go to this site that we manage. Um, but we learned very quickly, we were doing the wrong thing. Um, this short-term approach of putting a website up and taking it down was not good for us and it wasn't good for our partners. And, and one of my business partners said, what, you know, we, we questioned why we were doing it and we were having some success with it, but we, we weren't happy that this was actually the right course of action. So we kind of flipped our whole business model from this short-term approach to, to a longer-term approach. And, and what this means is for a partner, which could be German films, um, a producer or a national, like a, a national film body or a distributor is to take all the movies that they make and put them on one platform. So movies that are coming soon to cinemas or to streaming services, um, we put them all on the website. Fans can come in and say they want to watch certain movies, which, we ha which helps our distribution partners to um, understand where there's demand for their movies. And so when they're speaking to cinemas, they can then you know, sell to the cinemas to say there's already a demand in your city. We then, once movies are in cinemas, we then basically um, have developed essentially like a Showtime website within their corporate framework where fans can search by city to see which cinemas are playing the movie. Um, and I suppose one thing that we've really pushed boundaries on is we're now integrating with cinema box office systems so that people can buy tickets directly from, from people like Universal or, or, or studios. Um, and the biggest, I suppose, advancement by doing that is that we can actually track what marketing campaigns are delivering sales. And I suppose the, the, the term in the marketing world would be attribution or conversion metrics. And again, that, that's helped us sort of bring the big customers on board. Uh, the, the final piece that we have is we have a global data feed for streaming services around the world. So what we do for German films is we will show every country where people can watch German films which, you know, uh, this is a senseless plug, but we could do for Jordanian films internationally as well. So if someone wanted to watch uh, a Jordanian film in, in New York or in Abu Dhabi, we can obviously make it very easy for them um, to find such content. Um, just to explain, I suppose, what a branded movie experience means within all this, this is where the movie has its own, it can still have its own, you know, web domain, your own URL, uh, own look and feel for every movie. So every movie page looks different. Um, but it all sits on the one technology stack, which essentially means that it, it makes it easier for search engines uh, to, to find the movies you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And just, just, I suppose, a, a bit of a, a deeper dive on a, a solution we have right now for Studio Canal. What, what this looks like is they will have, a, a, I suppose, a web domain for Peninsula where fans can come in and based in which territories they're in, they can see availability for that movie. Um, again, in, in real time, if they click on this link to book tickets, they either go through to the cinema website to make the transaction or we power a full ticketing um, solution for them. We again, what we do is we track the behavior of the people who come so they can say, let's send a retargeting ad to everyone who came and watched, for example, 75% of the trailer. And what the big thing that we're trying to change is, is 92% of people that, that say they'll see a movie in cinemas don't go and see it. So trying to build smarter solutions to understand who would like to see it and then converting that to a sale later, I suppose, is, is, is really core to what we do. And um, again, for the full, the full back catalogue of content and for, for a partner like German Films, we, I think we have it's like 9,000 movies on their site. Um, if someone search, they can search by genre, a particular director, 
in a particular city or country and then we pull this sort of data so so, so someone can go and watch it on amazon on netflix um, on youtube or hulu depending on what territory they're on and again this this is really important and i suppose we, we've been very lucky in this last six months when COVID hit instead of us being cinema only this has allowed us to grow quite quickly um, because we're you know everyone needs to basically promote content for people to watch at home uh, sadly with cinemas closed in, in many parts of the world uh, again i think a piece that we're doing and i suppose where where innovation really becomes important the thing that really sort of sets us apart is this process that we have so to, to, to kind of explain what full ticketing means is if you imagine you see an ad on on Facebook or, or any social media platform um, and you click a book now button so you come through to this I suppose promotional landing page for that particular movie and you can then say I want to buy tickets for it we pull up the price card so you know what's the price for adults students um, children and then we pull the seat maps up all within this window where someone can make a purchase and then what we give at the end to our partners is is uh, I suppose an understanding of what marketing worked they can cut out ineffective marketing very quick and they can I suppose focus on delivering value for partners or for consumers to to go and watch their movies we, we also do things like we, we capture reviews of consumers so that again our partners um, like the studios or or small distributors can still speak to people to say is we know you know someone who gave it a five star we can say we know you like this movie so we think you'll like this but if someone gave it a one star we can say i know this wasn't to your taste but here's another movie and um, we think you'd like and um, so that 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 is essentially our product i think i think you know some, some of the points that mohanad was was saying about the, the power of movies like we, we when we work with national film bodies i suppose one of the things that we're really seeing is it movies are not just about watching a movie in that moment it's about it's a cultural experience and so it it definitely impacts as mahan was saying um tourism as much as it does you know the, the movie industry um i i think i think other things just which, which i was thinking um if anyone is producers here if i had to give any advice i would say the most important thing for you to do is if you're making a movie is to start collecting assets early so take imagery of the movie and um, making of videos so that once it's going through the post-production you can communicate this to fans and um, it's really important to have a website where people can come and say they want to watch your movie and then once that movie hits cinemas or streaming services have the ability to take those email addresses and say at the right time this movie is available um, to watch in your territory um, I, I could speak for a lot longer but I know there's um, other great speakers so I will um, I will pass this over to you guys. And if, if anyone has any questions or queries, um, I'm very happy to, to speak with you at any stage. Thank you. Thank you, Oli. We, we could listen for longer as well. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very smart uh, concept. And then um, this, is, this is the point of, of this discussion. Um, you're doing uh, marketing and uh, ticketing and market an analysis um, on, on behalf of uh, um, the producers and, and, and other entities um, f where you started with an idea, you saw a gap and, um, and you, um, uh, you grew that idea into, into an actual uh, business. Um, and that's uh, what we hope uh, that um, IBDA can, can um, um, can motivate uh, people um, uh, in the industry who have an idea or who are an existing um, uh, business, uh, like uh, Mr. Yusuf had uh, explained earlier, to um, to be to to study it and be ready to take it to the to the next step. Um, I'm going to uh, move to our next uh, uh, success story and. Um, our uh, guest speaker is Mr. Sami Arpa, who is the founder and CEO at Largo. Um, hello, uh, and you're also uh, speaking to us uh, from Lausanne, so another another uh, um, uh, part of uh, of the world. Um, can you please uh, talk to us about um, Largo and your um, your story with starting? Uh, your business. Hello, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, 
invitation. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Royal Film Commission and Venture X for this great uh, organization. And indeed, the uh, Ibra Tree is actually what they do with that is, uh, I agree with Oliver, it's really inspiring. I can tell our experience just on that topic. Uh, so once we started our uh, company in Switzerland, we had a bit of challenge because of our domain. Uh, Switzerland is a very strong country in terms of startup ecosystem, especially our uh, city Lausanne and, and Zurich because of two strong universities, uh, but they are heavily focused on med tech, biotech uh, and, and fintech. And once we started uh, a startup in creative industry related to, uh, related to film industry, uh, many people didn't, didn't know how to help us. Uh, that was a bit uh, demotivating. And it's great to see actually to create an accelerator focusing on the creative industry. Uh, and I personally believe there is a great, great potential uh, for that. Uh, so, and my personal journey, I am professionally computer scientist. I finished my uh, PhD in the field of uh, computational aesthetics by using uh, computer to generate art and also understand art. Uh, but I've been also a filmmaker. It has been my passion all the time. Uh, I directed uh, several films. So towards the end of my PhD, I was finding a way to combine my know-how from uh, from this uh, computer science and then and then provide a solution in film industry to, to combine these these two fields. Uh, and that's actually the problem uh, that, that we are solving now that I am going to present, uh, present you today. But we started the company together. I presented my idea to my PhD advisor. At the last year of my PhD, we started uh, the company together, together with my PhD advisor. So I, I am going to share my screen as well. I think it will be easier to describe the problem and solution this way. So what we do uh, is providing next generation storytelling tools uh, for the movie industry. And, and the problem we are solving is a bit related to the, the recent changes coming uh, with streaming platforms, uh, Netflix and uh, Amazon. Uh, so everything is much more uh, data oriented and uh, if we think about the production pipeline uh, of a film, there is many steps from uh, start to the end. Every movie starts with a script, but then, but then uh, with the producer and the director who creates the film, they create a vision, they select the cast, uh, they go down production by, by finding, uh, securing a budget, uh, and then afterwards, after production, there is post-production, uh, visual effects, sound effects, and finally a distribution strategy. So there are many uh, steps, uh, many decisions uh, that are taken uh, during these, these steps. Uh, so uh, for us, the question uh, was the following. Uh, once we were uh, searching, uh, 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 working on this problem, what is the decision mechanism for all these decisions during this development uh, process? And the answer is uh, gut feeling. Even some of the big studios, very big uh, producers, uh, the mechanism they use to make these decisions is, is, is the gut feeling. But as I mentioned uh, today, Netflix and Amazon are changing the overall uh, ecosystem in the movie industry. They are not typical uh, Hollywood companies. They are more, uh, uh, tech companies, but they are in film industry and you, they use heavily data-driven intelligence uh, to, uh, to make many of these decisions, which make them very successful. And the main problem, their technology is not available uh, to the rest of the industry. So as an independent producer, uh, maybe you are working with Netflix, but, uh, but you don't have access to their technologies or even uh, some of studios, uh, they are more metric oriented still, and many of them are heavily working uh, in with the traditional methods. 
So we came as a solution to this problem. Uh, we said we can provide artificial intelligence technologies at the production stage of uh, a film uh, to reduce the risk uh, of the film uh, and then also improve uh, the costs in terms of spendings uh, uh, and, and then provide, uh, create, uh, provide and create it, uh, creating the more impactful films. Uh, so in that manner, if we define our innovation, we had certain technologies. Uh, the goal of these technologies was to find the recipes of the content. That was something I was trying to uh, solve always once I was making my own films as well. Uh, because yeah, since I have more uh, technical background, I was always thinking, I mean, there should be some kind of recipes, ingredients of the successful films. Not only one recipe, this can be many, but still you can find certain patterns uh, uh, for the success, uh, successful films. And, and this is what our innovation is doing as well. You put the content, uh, like a story, your script, and then it's put into, into certain ingredients that can give you great hints about the possible impact uh, possible success of this film. So just to give you an example, uh, one type of uh, these ingredients that, that we define with our system is the mapping of the genres, genres of the films. Here you see, uh, you see the prediction of genres for each moment of, uh, of a video uh, on the screen at this moment. As you can see here, each color represents a different genre and on the right top, you see as the movie progress, you see how these uh, genre predictions are changing. So overall, you get a mapping of the content from start to end, for example, how the level of comedy is changing or how level of the adventure is changing. Uh, so this way, you know how much of the, each of these ingredients uh, exist in your content and then also how they appear, where they appear. This we can do both uh, from the video version and also script version. So we put the script of the film, we, again, we get, we get the same uh, similar patterns, which gives uh, a lot of insight about the content. And similarly, another type of the pattern that we find that, uh, is called genome of the film. So this is like a, a map of attributes, predefined attributes. Uh, it's almost, we have almost 1000 of them. These are the things that have been mostly associated with the films by the audience in the past. Uh, so our system has learned about those. So for example, what is an organized crime uh, inside a film or what is a sarcasm inside a film? So it has learned uh, about all these concepts. As soon as we put the script of the film, uh, it finds its relevance to each of these attributes then we get a ranking of these that we call as the genome uh, of the film. Here you see, for example, an, uh, uh, you see an example for, for Pulp Fiction, the film of uh, Tarantino. Uh, you see the most uh, important attributes that is finding gangster, drugs, Tarantino, mob, beat, hilarious. Uh, so it finds Tarantino as an attribute, just to let you know, we don't tell this film is Tarantino. We just give the script of the film and it doesn't know it's, it's Tarantino film, but from its style, it knows uh, it has very, it is very similar with Tarantino's style. So then it, it uh, associated this as, uh, as an important attribute. Okay, that's, that's really uh, yeah. interesting. Um, so uh, we're talking about um, also there's a huge part of analysis um, for for scripts before they're done and after um, and even analysis of existing footage. Is that what you're? Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. There is we can run the analysis at three stage pre-production, post-production and distribution. Pre-production stage, typically we get the script of the movie as input to the system. Uh, but at post-production, we get first rough cut footage and at uh, uh, distribution stage, we get fine cut footage as input uh, to the system. Mm -hmm. okay. And yeah, so basically the first step is to get these such ingredients. We have many more uh, such ingredients about the content that we present in the system. And the second uh, part, using these ingredients and then provide some insights uh, to the filmmakers. For example, 
what will be its potential box office revenue in specific country or in which countries it will be more successful than, or how to provide even some uplift uh, to the film by uh, playing with certain parameters. Or at earlier stage, the system can propose the casting. It really creates a DNA of the, your characters. It has already analyzed like uh, more than 100,000 uh, uh, actors deeply. And then we have almost 1 million uh, talents that has been uh, also analyzed in sh shallow uh, level. Uh, so it, this way, it also proposes casting automatically uh, to, uh, to you, so to give uh, to give an idea uh, what you can cast for the film. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Sami. This is again another great example of um, utilizing um, um, a technology to um, to serve uh, to serve um, a business and create uh, a business in, in the creative uh, in the creative industry. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to um, give the mic to our uh, uh, our guest, um, Sharif Al Majali, who is the managing director and founder of um, Desert Motion Pictures, uh, another success story. Um, who will uh, please uh, share um, his uh, his experience with us in uh, in starting a, a business in the creative industry? Although um, may I say, Sharif is not a stranger to the creative industry, but uh, to venture and start a business is um, uh, is definitely uh, another experience. So, uh, Sharif, you, hello and welcome to this session. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Diala, and thank you uh, for having me. Um, I don't know if uh, if, if it's uh, yet the right time to call myself a success story. I guess I am on the path, but we're still struggling. I think uh, being uh, uh, or reaching the success is uh, is when not making your Arabic content, but making the Arabic content in quantities becomes the norm. And once we, once I personally reach that point, and and be making three, four different films and TV Arabic content uh, is the norm to me. Uh, and, and that's that's when I would say uh, 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 that would be a successful story, especially for my company, or at least that's where my success target is. Uh, but at the moment, we're on the way and, and on the path and grinding every day to, to get there. Um, I wanna uh, share my screen just so, well, not really a presentation, but, um, uh, okay, sure. So, um, to all the um, people watching, and uh, and uh, and I want you to know that um, I, I personally I graduated uh, from uh, uh, the University of Jordan in theater, and I was very passionate about theater. Uh, but in my graduation project, uh, I tried to integrate film and theater together. So I had to make a movie, like a short one to put it on, on the stage. And I didn't know how to do it. And so I heard about the Royal Film Commission and it was, it was only two years old at the time. And I knocked on their door and they literally went uh, um, above and beyond for me to make that little tiny short film for my graduation project. This student just came, knocked on their door and said, hey, I need help. They said. Here's what you need, here are the tools, here's the know-how, here's this guy that can help you. And from there, there was a long history of a relationship with the Royal Film Commission. And, and that's where I, you know, my journey uh, um, uh, started and, and, and where, where I grew as a person and, uh, and, and got all my knowledge. Um, and I think that, I think I can't speak about the Film Commission because I am, uh, um, um, part of it, or I want to say, like, I don't know, I, I lose, I, can't, I mean, I'm part of the film commission, it's like my family, so I really can't say the good stuff about it, but um, here's what I can say. Seeing in, in what I just heard from uh, Ibda Ventrex, that collaboration is going to do great things uh, in, in, in a way you cannot even imagine, because I think um, the film commission was doing everything right, and what was just missing is that component. So to see you guys working together, I think 
is, is going to be. And, and let, me, let me just say this to, to you, Mr. Yusuf. When I first left the film commission and, and decided that I want to open my own company, even if you existed in front of me at the time, I wouldn't have come to you. I, I would want to do it on my own and maybe fail and then see what went wrong. And then I would come to you. And this is the right time for, for me and, 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 and for anybody to basically try and do things on your own. And then once you start thinking about growing is where I would come to something like VentureX or Adapt. Um, so I worked at the Film Commission and I took up the ladder for uh, just a normal, like going from liaison officer to uh, production officer to production supervisor, then to production manager for such a long time. And, and when I and when I started, uh, uh, when I became the production manager and started more engaged in the policy making uh, um, um, part of the of working with the Film Commission, is when I started thinking that now is probably the time for me to go and 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 do something on my own, but yet with the Film Commission with the country. Because look, I believe that a successful um, uh, businesses or a successful country in terms of business and economy, let me say, is when the private sector and the public sector work hand in hand and work together. Uh, and, and that was my main, um, that's what I was thinking about. Like I wanted to go and start a business and take all the knowledge that I've learned while working at the Film Commission and do it on, on as a private sector, but yet help the public sector at the same time. And it, it was always on my mind that the more the more I do, the, the, the more business I bring into to Jordan, the more you know more people will will benefit from it. And uh, and uh, and I think I managed to um, with like the first year to first land uh, Sergio, which is the Netflix project. And it was a very terrifying moment for me because here's about six million dollars in my company's bank account that I got to manage this war movie that's filming in Jordan. And however, again, with all the knowledge, everything that I've learned, um, we managed to pull off such a great and, 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 uh, and, uh, and smooth shoot. And then yet again, I uh, also worked on another one in a bigger scale with working on a, a project called Messiah. And Messiah was even twice as big as Sergio. And that was, you know, a movie that, a series, a TV series that was very difficult to kind of, you know, work on because of all the components and everything that it, all the, all the requirements that they needed. Um, but eventually, you know, with the help of the Film Commission and, 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 and a great, amazing local crew. I mean, probably one of the best crews I've, you know, in Jordan, you'll find in Jordan and we managed to pull it off. Um, but again, am I happy that I did all of this? Am I happy that I, yes, I am. Have I reached where I wanted to be? No, it's where, it's the point where I start making local Arabic productions, uh, uh, um, our stories, to tell our stories. And, uh, and we're on the way to try and, and get there at some point and, and hopefully uh, we will. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Sharif. Again, um, what I believe is we're, we're seeing here is the industry is growing and uh, the creative industry is so diverse um, that when, when you need to properly uh, uh, support it, um, there's a lot of room for, for growth, for growth of existing businesses, for people who have the experience and they see a, a gap in the market and then they, wanna, they want to uh, develop that idea. And, um, and here we have, uh, we have Ibda, um, we hope this- I think venture... we have to create a factory where we make Arabic content and audience goes and watches that Arabic content. And then from that audience, we get, we're able to make more. And then we just keep doing this. Once we get to that factory setting, that's when we have an actual film industry, a film and TV industry. 
Absolutely, and and that's that's uh, that's one uh, one great uh, aspect. I must agree. So, um, if if we going back to uh, Mr. Yusuf, if we were gonna going to assume some examples uh, from um, uh, from examples of uh, the 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 ventures that Ibda is targeting or inviting to uh, to apply, uh, we're talking about uh, maybe from what Sharif was saying maybe um, a writer's uh, a group or writer's uh, a venture um, maybe also we can we can uh, uh, talk uh, to create uh, content and then that uh, that business will would, would need uh, guidance or to develop if it's not uh, existing already um, and at the same time just looking at the pictures um, uh, that Sharif was showing us we we had a look at uh, a lot of logistics so people who also can provide um, some uh, some uh, some logistics to film is also um, an idea uh, that uh, uh, venture ex Ibda will will be inviting or is is inviting to to apply um, at the same time uh, we we uh, had a very interesting it's it's not also uh, it's not only about the um, physical or the the well known elements in the creative industry like creating a script or doing the logistics of, of actually uh, holding physical production. It's also ideas like, uh, like uh, Oli and uh, um, um, uh, that uh, Oli and Sami had, had presented uh, as well. Um, some, uh, um, some, some business idea to, to develop or, or to help with the decision making in developing um, a film or some analysis for, for the back end of, of the process of filmmaking, um, as well as uh, some uh, uh, marketing uh, uh, help and, uh, and uh, ticketing uh, services. So just to, just to sum, uh, to sum uh, uh, this, um, do you have a final um, message you would like to direct uh, on this platform today? Um, for for uh, the people that uh, Ibda is is inviting to come and um, apply, uh, might it be for for capital, for mentorship, um, for growing an idea or an existing business into into um, into a bigger uh, a bigger one? I mean, it's it's. Um... Like you said, it was very exciting to listen to um, um, to, to to Oliver, Sami, and, and Sharif, and to see the diverse approach that each came up with. And I think they're 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 prime examples of what we want to invite everybody around uh, around here listening to us to consider when they want to apply. I mean, you could go, you know, it's it's when when you look at the uh, um, the design of and the manufacturing of an automobile or a car, basically. I mean, you go from there's, there's a lot of science, there's a lot of mechanics, there's a lot of electricity, there's a lot of, um, um, today now you have a lot of artificial intelligence that goes into, into its overall um, um, uh, design and development. And also I think now the development of and the make of a film is not something that is um, unique to one element versus another. Um, I remember sitting with a gentleman who um, worked on, you know, his, his job was the 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 design and 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 his you know career was around what he did. I mean his 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 claim to fame, as he said, is that you know when when that dragon was moving in Transformers, I was the guy who did that, right? So so the 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 um, um, you know the the itemization of what is it that we need is really an invitation to the people around the table is to consider and look at the where the sector is going and where the industry is going and actually i mean covid 19 is an inspiration in a way i mean it's a disaster in some other ways of course but but it's an inspiration to see that we are very um uh, uh weak um uh, where you know think can disrupt the whole sector and and people don't go to cinemas and people don't consume content the same way that they used to but now they consume content in a totally different way um so you know, when you look at um, um, uh, content and how you want to deliver that content, the platforms that deliver it, the interaction, the engagement between people, between the viewer and between what's being viewed, um, um, all of these elements are, 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 are very uh, decisive in deciding how you can win. 
you know, um, what are the psychographics of the prime prospect viewer that you want to create? Um, um, what are the emotional benefits that you want to communicate? What are the functional benefits that you want to basically build on and, and generate? So it's just not, uh, uh, it is developing script. It is the, the actual mechanical process of making a film, but it's also probably something totally different. Um, and, and what is it? We don't know. I mean, that's why um, uh, the beauty of listening to, I mean, you know, when I, when I listened to Sammy presenting uh, what he was working on and when I listened to Oliver and to Sharif, it's, it's, it's clear that there's, there's the, the process of doing things that need to be done. You need to basically have a budget. You need to expense that budget. You want to uh, manage people, resources, uh, you know, logistics and everything around creating the final product. But if you, but, but the film, Sergio, might have gone to Sammy and said, um, Sammy, here's a script, right? And what do you think? Is this going to win? Is, and, and, and where is it going to win, right? And he probably might have come and told them, well, you know what? It could win, but it's not going to win in, in, uh, in, 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 in the Arab world, right? Uh, people don't might, it, it might win in the Latin American context, or it might win in, a, in an African viewing context, because... Um, he has the science for that. And then, and then after you basically launch it, you know, Oliver can come and say, well, um, um, here's, the, here's, here's the film. People want to watch it. Now they can get the chance to decide where to watch it from and, 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 and to whether watch it in, in home or, or move around the different um, uh, opportunities and, and options that might be available there. So it's, it's for everybody around here, okay, um, uh, looking to consider the development of, 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 of areas that are keen and interesting to the audience. So I really invite everybody to look at what is it that they want. The starting point is for us to create critical mass, enough entities. If we can come out of November with 15, 20 projects that we can start with and then show that these projects after three, four months down the road are, are, are innovative enough, are smart enough, are intelligent enough, are beautiful enough, to be attractive to bring in capital further, then we can validate that we have something interesting that we can bring in much more capital around it and, and create a journey that can keep funding these ideas on a continuous basis. So we move on to the second 20 and the, and the third 20 and, the, and, and so forth until we get to where we want to go. So it's, a, it's an open invitation for everybody to apply. And I hope that we have um, um, uh, you know, um, a great experience. And that six months down the road, we look back and we say, We've really proven that this sector is, is, is exciting, it's wild, it's fun. There's a lot of things that we could do together in it and, and, and we are successful collectively. Thank you, thank you. It's, it's true. Um, um, there is a lot of potential um, um, in the industry and all the other sectors that would, um, would, could hold uh, businesses to service uh, and to um, contribute to the, to the industry. Um, Mohanad, um, it, I'm just going to um, uh, ask you please to very briefly um, um, give us a few words um, of invitation on behalf of the Royal Film Commission. I know that uh, through your uh, professional and personal career, um, you've been uh, on a mission, um, on a hunt for talent. Um, so if you can, um, if you, if you have any words of encouragement, um, any, um, again, invitation, uh, for, uh, for applying to IBDA, the, uh, the, uh, the accelerator, um, if you have, uh, any words to, to, uh, to say to our participants today, and then we, we will move to, uh, a few questions from our participants. Uh, thank you, Diala. Um, I think it's clear from what we're we're seeing that with the growth of the of the industry that there is a demand, there is a need. Usually, you uh, come up with a project or you start a, a, a business according to the needs. The need is there. The opportunities are there. The uh, risk of it can be much, much um, become mi minimized when you are working with an entity like IBDA. Because it's not, I know it might sound that it's long phases and I need to do this and I need to do that. And, but eventually you have to, whether you do it 
did it yourself or you, you did it through such a platform, but then the opportunities are bigger, bigger for you. I know that again and again, um, Jordan is trying to complete the full circle of uh, what, what, what a local industry can, uh, can look like and the international industry can benefit, benefit from it. Um, for example, also, I'd like to mention that we're, we're working on, a, on building a studio, sound stages that will uh, serve multiple pers pur purposes. Just that project itself, there are hundreds and hundreds of opportunities of investment and uh, uh, contribution into the, into the uh, film industry. So I, I really encourage everybody to uh, explore. You don't, you're not going to lose anything. Explore, go, uh, don't, don't be shy to put, put your idea, no matter what it is. And, and we're not talking here about just specific one line. We're talking about whether it's creative or technical or administrative, any idea that you can think of, similar to the successes that we just just heard, it can be done. It can it can help um, help the industry and yourself and the people who are working with you. That's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that that is the hope. Um, the uh, Jordanian talent is not exclusively Jordanian. Um, uh, the industry uh, in in the region, uh, as as a whole, is is very uh, collaborative, um, and there's a lot a, a lot of room uh, for for innovation uh, locally and and uh, regionally. Um, I will be going through some of the comments. Uh, and some of the questions that uh, were sent to us. Uh, there is a question about the, the, the sum of money that VentureX is investing in different uh, sectors. Maybe we did not, um, and there's a suggestion of giving uh, it as capitals to the creative industry companies through IBDA. Um, maybe uh, if we can just very quickly um, highlight again how IBDA uh, works, if there's just a small summary of uh, how it works uh, in terms of uh, funds. Well, I mean, we, what we do is it's, it's, a, it's, it's an opportunistic and challenging approach that I basically worked on. Um, um, uh, you know the the uh, Walid Tahabsam and I are managing partners or are partners in this in this endeavor together, and what we went ahead uh, and you know, to the question that was asked is why agritech and, and and the size of the fund and can we allocate from that uh, certain investments towards a sector versus another? What we generally do is we st we, we start with a starting uh, uh, premise or, or or a platform to build on, and to see whether or not we have enough critical mass that can generate pipeline. And projects. Um, so uh, a year and a half ago, probably actually now close to two years, it was actually at the beginning of uh, 2019, is when we started to consider and talk about a region that's left um, uh, away from the center, Wadi Araba. I think everybody here from Jordan knows where Wadi Araba. It's been between the Dead Sea and 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 the Red Sea, and it's 2,000 kilometers, but underserved, right? Totally underserved. And the, and, the, and the concept there was, can we do something that can be different, differentiating and, and inviting for people to consider this as an option for um, uh, validating their concept and ideas? And that's how this came. Now, um, a fund needs a couple of things to start with. It needs an anchor investor, generally. I mean, A, we as a general partner can commit to the fund to manage the fund. So if we said that a fund is uh, you know, X percentage or X amount, the general partner generally commits 1% of that amount so that they can manage the, the, the fund itself. And of course, they work on the design of it. But in the case of Wadi Araba, there was a, a, a willingness of, of one entity there to be the anchor investor to grow that going forward. Um, so what's the question when it comes to the creative sector? We, we, I worked at, at one point in time on, uh, on an old fund that we had, not a Venture X fund. So, but, but there's a lot of excitement for us to study doing the same thing for the creative sector, for the film sector, if I want to be more specific even. Um, and, and in that uh, aspect, again, just to be clear, we're talking about venture capital, not uh, so, so it won't be towards helping a film 
get uh, uh, or cover production costs and get launched and develop itself, right? So we're looking at some some different elements in that space, but this is something that we want to consider. It is something that we want to study, and 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 you know, it's something that we talk a lot about. Uh, is there an, an an appetite for risk? We we have an appetite for risk. We're willing to to by design. VC is all about risk, right? So. Um, we're not going to shy away from risk, but what we do need to make this successful is the group here um, collaborating together, translating themselves into potential projects that we could look at so that I can take that argument and talk with my partners and with other people around the, uh, in, outside of the context of what we do and then generate the capital that we want to work with and, and, and deliver on and invest in. So that, yes, at the end, we do have... Um, uh, a capacity where we have a dedicated fund to the sector, where we can deploy money and invest behind these ideas and share the risk that they will um, uh, 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 take when they make that journey and, and step into creating their businesses to become very successful. I think that's a very important point. What's also very important and key is that we need to show everybody again, um, it's an open invitation, as I said, but, but when you talk to Sami, when you talk to Sharif, when you talk to Oliver, um, um, one of the key points that they would probably highlight is how how non uh, uh, regional are you? I mean, you need to be you need to think of solutions that are global that can go beyond your geographic your geographic footprint, right? So so you cannot be limited to Jordan, and that's a challenge that that that, that everybody also has to think about. How can I present something that is not limited to my geographic footprint? That is not limited to Amman. That is not limited to to the Middle East even. How can I create something? That takes me over and beyond, and 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 that is what we want to create as an argument, so that yes, we can basically come and say um, um, uh, we want to invest in this case. Let me give you, uh, uh, in my opinion, it was an opportunity that the sector lost, the creative sector lost, right? So the creative industries has a wide definition. It includes gastronomy, somebody making you know cooking food, okay, and it includes film, it includes radio, it includes art. At one point in time, we we were capable of, um, I think it was 2015, when we came out with a 2.25 million JD fund that was dedicated towards the creative industries. But we didn't have critical mass enough. We met with people in the sector, but we didn't create enough critical mass to justify getting the bulk of that fund going towards them, right? So at the end, it moved in a direction which you know, I might have my personal opinion about about, uh, about where where it should, it should have been invested, but the net in, the, the net outcome of that is that we need to create critical mass, show that the sector is strong, show that the film sector can produce these different uh, concepts and ideas that are investable, and then with that go and raise capital for you. At the end, we want to raise capital for you. That's the that's the net. But is it upfront or is it belated or or or, or a bit late? And coming at 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 the um, you know three months down the road or four months down the road from when we start together working, so I think that's really the difference in this case. But net net, we want to raise capital for you. We want to find investors that are willing to share the risk and be excited to do uh, 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 to join you in your journey going forward. Excellent, thank you. I'm going to ask one last uh, quick question, um, and then uh, I'm afraid we're out of time, so we, we will have to wrap it up right after. Uh, the question is, who can apply to IBDA? Uh, what is the uh, criteria? Is it solely for uh, uh, people and, and businesses in Jordan? Anybody who is active, I mean, this is a program for people in Jordan, people that are might be outside of Jordan but want to be active in Jordan. So um, anybody can apply, frankly. I mean, it's it's a, it's it's not limited to uh, to a specific geography. Um, uh, we do have a, to to be capable of giving them a value proposition and extend to them value. There is a, a an element of um, an, an Arabic an, an an Arab angle or an Arabic angle or something to leverage what what we are capable of doing here and what the Royal Film Commission can help them with. I mean, at the end, it's a partnership where we're combining our efforts between us and between them to see how can we collectively go out and say, we can help, we can do something for you, right? Um, um, if, if there was, I mean, you know, when I looked at Usher Youth, um, um, there are certain parts where, you know, I want to watch this film, but it says I can't watch this film in my own context, in, in my in Jordan specifically, right? So, so how can I overcome that? Is is there 
Is there an extension to doing so? Is there content that they have that they might want to put on their platform, um, um, which is Arabic content, let's say. So, so they might want to get assistance to do so and, may, and, and might want to decide to join a program or not. But the point is that at the end, the, the, it, 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 is, it is not, it is from ideation to mature. You could be in a business that is generating money and you're really happy with what you're doing and you want to basically extend it to something else or you want to take it somewhere else and you need support in doing so. So if you feel that, um, and, and if you're in doubt, just share the idea with us, okay? We would love to have, to, to have a discussion, freely share our ideas, think together. And if there's no fit, we'll tell you there's no fit. But for now, don't hesitate, regardless of where you are, journey-wise, um, uh, stage-wise, um, capitalization, just share with us what you have in mind and let's have a discussion. It's, we're not gonna get it first, it would, as they say, we're not going to get, get it right the first time, but we are going to develop this as a cycle and as we go. We're going to learn together. And as we learn together, we're going to learn to inspire each other. And we're going to you know, make mistakes, avoid mistakes, build on mistakes, and build on successes, and keep be keeping the momentum going until we really have um, 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 uh, an argument that this is one of the best, most viable, vibrant, exciting sectors that everybody should be a part of. Great, thank you, thank you very much, and that that is the hope. Um, we are uh, out of time with today's um, uh, uh, webinar, and we'd like to thank all our participants and to thank all our speakers, um, Mr. Mohanad Al Bakri from the Royal Film Commission uh, of Jordan, Mr. Yusuf uh, Hamid Al Din from um, Venture X and uh, Ibda, um, Mr. Uh, Sami uh, from uh, La La Largo, sorry, <laughs> I almost got that uh, that wrong. Uh, so Sharif Majali from Desert Motion Picture. Last but not least, uh, Mr. Oli from Usher. You thank you very much for your time today, and thank you to the Royal Film Commission of Jordan and to Venture X. Uh, if any of our participants uh, would like any further information, uh, they should feel free. Uh, to visit uh, the website of um, IBDA or VentureX and the Royal Film Commission uh, of Jordan. Thank you very much. Uh, Diala, Diala, before before you uh, you leave or everybody leaves, I also want to thank you so much for moderating this uh, this session. Well, it's done. my pleasure. Thank my you pleasure. so much indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much.